Well, thanks Priscilla for being here today. It's an honor to have you. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for having me. Yeah, it's, um, as you can tell, a lot of us have been through stress now, going on 14 weeks since the lockdown first started. Now we're, we're free to move about, but I feel like there's been this buildup of stress. Uh, we're all experiencing new things in this past week. Uh, Emirates laid off a lot of people and Fly Dubai laid off a lot of people. So yeah. it's been a stressful 14 weeks. And yeah. so um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great information that you're going to be able to give us some helpful tips to help us get through this time. So basically share all your secrets to us today. <laughs> okay, I'll try. Uh, you know, the thing is we are living in such an unusual time. And so the stress that we are seeing with uh, people today is also highly unusual because it's mm -hmm. been built up over a period of uh, a long period of time. And, and so what's interesting is that, you know, um, the normal strategies and normal interventions that would work to deal mm -hmm. with fear and anxiety and stress is not working after 14 weeks. People are just, you know, we started off with just probably feeling frightened, a little bit frightened, a little bit concerned now to full-blown panic and especially if we've lost our jobs in the city it's not easy as well so it, it's it's been a very very difficult time very uncertain very unusual and so what we're seeing is it's a lot of people who you know it's one thing to get thrown into uh you know into lockdown with the, with your significant other and children and in in quarantine for a long period of time that's added pressure itself <laughs> it and, is. Yeah, you know it, it, it's not easy i mean if you think about all the fathers the men who have gone out to work i mean now you're staying back at home you are not only just trying to get work done you're having to deal with your spouse and with your kids in the way so there's a lot added to the mix and then of course, with a job loss as well, it's, it's, a, it's an enormous pressure as well. Um, so, you know, some of the things that, that, that is common or what we're seeing with people today is, is, is fear is one thing, but what's more concerning is the anxiety. So it's fear that's causing a lot of worry, but the buildup of anxiety. And of course, depression is also underlying it as well. So, you know, when you talk about, you know, depressive moods, you know, just a low mood, just, just you know, not wanting to get out of bed, because everything is a blur. Everything is sort of just blurred into one, you know, and it's like even, you know, just imagine if you're at home, you don't have a, a set space for, for things. Everything is just becoming one. Your kids are in the way, your spouse is in the way, you're trying to get work done. So with just the blur of it, some, uh, and, and, you know, the weekdays now look like weekends and weekends look like weekdays. Uh, after a while, people are just uh, losing their mood, you know, just feeling really down not wanting to get up, not motivated to get up and just, you know, start the day. So we're seeing a lot of low moods, uh, a lot of uh, people who are feeling um, irritable. The next thing is when you're just having this low mood, constantly discouraged, unmotivated. After a while, it's then a lot of irritability. Then you're snapping at your spouse, then you're snapping at your kids. So you're just irritated uh, with everything because just things are not working out. And from there, then it just starts to grow. It starts to interrupt your sleep patterns, food, not wanting to eat, you know, losing appetite. You know, all those are just underlying symptoms. It doesn't mean there's a disorder now. This is just underlying symptoms that all of us human beings go through, especially in prolonged periods like this. Yeah, I, so it's difficult. Yeah. I, I think you've just explained about every emotion that I felt in the past uh, 14 weeks, ex ex except for the not wanting to eat. Uh, I still had that one, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Well, so, exactly. So you've got other people on the other extreme who are sleeping in more and eating more. So yeah. we work on extremes. So what happens with stress? We go on extremes. So it's a loss of balance. Mm. So it's one extreme to the other. So we can either be sleeping uh, less or sleeping more or eating less or eating more. So it's just out of balance. Yeah, I see. I know I, for me, um, I really struggled with the working at home and, and then the kids coming and interrupting me every few hours. Hey, daddy, let's wrestle, yeah. which is fun. I had like three or four yeah. wrestle breaks a day, yeah. uh, which has been fun to get to know my, my kids a little bit yeah. more. Um, but it was definitely harder to get work done. Sure, and yeah. I also experienced um, a times where that kind of work-life balance was also hard to manage yeah. because I could work you know, all day that I'm awake. And, and I think a lot of other people were feeling the same way because they were getting text messages or, hey, let's get on a Zoom call yeah. at 8 p.m. at night. And it's like, where, when do I turn off? 
Yes, and so right. that caused a lot of, I think, possible stress definitely, for, for, sure. for people as well. Absolutely. That's, that, that's definitely it. And so, you know, one of the things that really helps in, in such a time like this is to really establish routine. Mm. So even though we all locked down in one space and, in, 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 and we're going through our day, we still have to get work done. We still have to do relationships. We still have to get cooking done. So a lot of people are doing a lot more cooking at home. Um, but the key is to actually establish some kind of routine because that brings a lot of stability. So, you know, one of the things, uh, even though you're not getting up and putting on a suit to go to work, still get up in the morning, still get dressed up, dressed up and present yourself well in front of your Zoom meeting. Even though you're doing a Zoom meeting, yeah. pre present yourself pretty well. I mean, you get up, dress up and, and you know, all of that is, it, it, it helps the mind uh, sort of bring some kind of stability and understanding like even though I'm not leaving uh, the space, I'm stepping into another role or I'm stepping into another uh, dimension right now. I'm, I'm not going out to work, I'm going to work. So it, it, it helps also kind of create in a sense, a sense of identity and purpose. So I, I'm still getting dressed up, but I'm having my meeting from home. So that, that really helps. In a, in a season like this to just establish routine. So you still get up in the morning. If you do you know, your exercise before you start your work, exercise, get to work. And of course, what is key is to establish a time where there is a cutoff. Yeah. Uh, there needs to be a cutoff. So if you end work on a usual basis at five in the evening, then at five o'clock you're done. Um, and you know, you, of course, another thing about routine is having space as well as, you know, you, don't, you won't kind of sleep in the kitchen yeah. So, you know that every room in the house has its purpose and its role in that sense. So even with, with just uh, doing routine in life at home, we understand, okay, set your own workstation. Like if you have kids who are doing e-learning now, a lot of the children are at home because schools are shut, you know, that they have their workstation. Everything is set up there. This is your study room. You know, we're not kind of, and then the dining room is when we come together as a family and sit down and have lunch and meals together. So we can try to create that space as well and structure it that way and have routine. That, that brings enormous amount of stability and it gives you a sense of, 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 of purpose and direction, which is key. Uh, so mm. that, that really helps as well. Yeah, I can see how that would lessen stress if lessen there's more stress, yeah. uh, stability. Yeah, uh, that's right. Well, tell me, what can, um, what can we do as, as, as maybe people that um, have not lost their jobs and things are going decent, um, but we've had a lot of friends that have mm -hmm. that have either you know had a, a salary reduction or no pay or maybe even lost their job. What's maybe some tips that we could do to help um, help yeah. them? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, especially for families and, and and even singles. You know, people who are living here in the UAE, we are expats here. And, you know, in a situation like this where we are far from home, we don't have our support. Uh, such a time like this can really produce a lot of stress, especially if you've lost your job as well. So, you know, for those of us uh, in the city like this, you know, we know of someone who's lost their job or they're going through a tough time. This is really a time to build community. This is where community really comes into place to actually bring, uh, again, stability. Um, so, you know, for those of us who know someone who has lost a job in, in, in such a time like this, it is difficult, it is emotional because, you know, the next step is you, you're going to have to either pack up and leave, you know. Uh, so the great way to do, to do life with, with someone like that is to, and I always say, don't, don't, don't just WhatsApp and ask someone how you're doing. Send a voice note because it's something about hearing people's voices that really helps to bring peace of mind and just calm. To the soul so you know it's just building community and building relationship is key so send a voice note pick up the phone and just check in with that person i mean we are called to love god and love our neighbors and so this is a perfect season to just really demonstrate what love looks like and so it's 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 where i encourage people to this is key it's fundamental for our own mental health the more inward we are the more stressed up we are we got to start to look outward. And so when we start to engage with people, just check in with people, just pick up the phone and call them, uh, you know, have a coffee if you can, if you're not afraid to go out. It helps so much and just bring peace, bring peace of mind. Uh, this is the part where, you know, 
uh, even in scripture it even says when we actually do something for another or do something for, for the least of my brethren in that sense when we step out and we actually call, engage with them, talk to them, pray for them this is time it really just it helps us as well kind of ease the anxiety, ease the stress where we know we're not in this alone but we are in this together so definitely just relationship is big at this point uh, mm -hmm. call someone, send a voice note, uh, encourage them and and you know what there are a lot of tools out there you know there's a lot of people a therapist myself a lot of life coaches who are offering a lot of things now online as well mm -hmm. so as, as people if you know someone who's doing that like just just financial tips or you know how to get through a tough time just direct people into those channels as well because we need people this is the yeah. season we need people. Yeah, and I think that you brought up a good point that and it's, I think one of the major benefits of being in a church community is, yeah. is that you're able to support each other. That's I know right. in my, my small group, uh, for yeah. example, we've had multiple people that have been in need and the small group has really gone around them wow. and helped them, has helped pay for rent, yeah. has provided food yeah. uh, because they had a, a system, they had a community around them and that's been a really benefit for them. And so I, I for me, I think that's one of the greatest things that the church does does yeah, does for people. Absolutely, relationship is key. We we don't do well in isolation. We don't do well alone. And so, in a city like this, where we are, you know, we don't have our usual support network. Mm -hmm. This is the time to actually build it. We really need each other at this point of time. Relationship is, you know, every time we build relationship and we we engage with people. What we are actually unknowingly doing is we're learning how to trust as well. Yeah. And trust is a big thing where it's, you know, people think it, the more stressed I am or the more fearful I am or the more anxious I am, it's a naturally you, you turn inward but, and you want to have more control over things. But the, the way to get over anxiety and to get over worry and is to actually learn how to let go and to trust. Mm. And to lean into someone else, you know, we trust God in prayer, of course, and then we learn how to trust people too. And, and so the more we learn to open our hearts and do community and come around each other, pray for each other, help each other out, the more we feel, uh, we feel a lot more uh, at peace, a lot more at rest, and a lot more assured because we don't, we're not alone. Like, okay, mm. I've got you, you've got me. We are in this together. Yeah. Well, those are really great tips, uh, Priscilla. Um, thank you. I want to thank you for being here. This is a big subject, uh, yes. so we're going to have a couple weeks uh, where we're going to have where we're going to interview you. So, um, so be more helpful tips to come here next week. So, thank you so much thank for, you so for much. being here, thank and you. Um, thank you guys for being here. Uh, we're so excited that you joined us here this week. Uh, we'll continue to see you on social media throughout the week. Until then, next Friday. Have a great week. Take care.